By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to count between two numbers just like this. So, let's get started. I already have a basic scene tree set up, which includes a root node 2D, a tween, and a label in the middle of the screen, which will display the number. Now go ahead and attach a script to your root scene, and then delete all these comments. First off, we're going to make a simple count function that's going to take a past parameter, round it to the nearest whole integer, and then changes the label's text to that rounded integer. We're rounding here because the tween will also pass floats to this function, and we don't want the decimal places because it can look kind of messy. If that is something you do want though, just don't round the number here. That's all for this function, so let's move on to the tween. If you've used tweens before, you probably only use the interpolate property function, but today we're actually using a different tween function, the interpolate method function. This function is super, super cool, and I really can't believe I've only recently learned about it. Basically, using this function, you can call on a function in the script and then tween between two parameters. In this case, we're calling our own script and the count function we just made. We're going to give it a 0 to start and an end value of 100. This will make it count from 0 to 100. We're also going to give it 4 seconds to do this and then pass the tween.translinear and tween.easeInOut functions to make it nice and smooth. Don't forget to start the tween, and then we should be all good to go. As you can see, it's working perfectly. We can also make it count down, too. So, when would you use something like this? I like to use it at the end of a level to display the player's score, which would look something like this. Obviously though, it's going to give me an error because I haven't declared what the player's score is, but you should get the idea. It ends up looking much, much nicer than just a static number at the end of a level. We can also change the last two tween parameters to give the counting a totally different look to it. I like to use tween.transexpo and tween.easeout, which makes it look like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Subscribe for more tutorials.